Hello. How are you? I'm early. I just want to make sure that it works. Let me know when you get here. No, I'm not done with all the blocks. I have the one, two that I'm going to be doing on today's class, and then I have two more to do. It's been a crazy week. What are you going to do? Got a few minutes, so. Hope you guys are having fun with us. I hope you have enjoyed this, putting this quilt together. I love the quilt a lot. It's crazy. My life is crazy. But I don't know what I would do if it wasn't crazy. Normal, just, or I should say not normal, but boring, just doesn't happen in my life. Not even a little bit. But that's life. Can I tell you, after this, I got to work on jubilation, which we're starting in June. I can't wait. I still got a bunch to work on on that quilt because this one and life in general, the, the butterfly quilt and life in general has gotten in the way. But I can't wait because that one is looking gorgeous. Let's see if I can show you something. Let's see. What do you think? Now, this is Deb Tucker's Jubilation. So, we're using Studio 180 rulers. Hers was done in batiks. Mine is done in the white, is canvas, Northcott's canvas, which is their version of a grunge, which I love because it doesn't look dirty. A lot of the grunge to me just looks dirty. And Cosmic Strand, which is an older line that I had up here on my shelf that works really, really pretty for this, I think. But there you go. That's just one quarter of it. I've got a few more of them done already. So I'm super excited. I have a few more blocks and then I can put these together. It's getting there. Oh, so much. Normally, you know, it wouldn't be that bad, but it's the holidays. I decided two months ago to renovate my kitchen. In between there, my husband's been in the hospital twice. And I've got family coming for the holidays, which isn't a big deal. It just means I have to go extra stone chip so instead of just putting up my christmas tree i've got to decorate i've got to get my guest room back in order and my kitchen together so that i can do all of the entertaining and cooking and just everything it's a lot but not much i can do it's got to be done okay I'm a little bit early, so we'll start and hopefully 
just give me a holler when you come in so or a message so I know that you're here and we'll start going because this is going to be a little bit longer than normal. Okay. We're doing these blocks. Okay. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing it. Now, curves, I, I, I hate doing curves. Curves, for me, never work out the way they're supposed to. So, I'm giving you a couple of options. I'm going to show you how I do it. This is one option where we have our background fabric, and we fused these pieces, and I applicate them on with a really small, a lightweight fusible heat and bond light. And then I did a really, really small zigzag stitch. It's hard to tell, but hopefully you can see it. A very, very small zigzag stitch in this kind of bluish teal going all the way around the outside and down the center. That's one option for you. I suggest if this is how you're going to do it, you do them to the same blocks the same. And then the other option is more traditional piecing. Okay. But I do not cut the fabrics the same size that they tell you to, okay? I have personally found that, okay, this is your piece. This darker outside line is supposed to be your cut piece. I cut them, all of mine, a quarter of an inch bigger than that. And I'll show you why soon when we start piecing but i've found the bigger is better and then i can cut it down without worrying about um having my pieces the right size i have found in the past and it's just the way i do it that when i try to to piece these pieces together i always end up with either a pucker or a short piece or a long piece on the edge and I've just found that cutting them a quarter of an inch bigger and then squaring them up when you're done works 100% of the time for me, rather than trying to do the pieces exact. Now, this is great if you have enough fabric in your kit to do that. Um, if you're buying the fabric yourself for your kits, I would recommend making sure you buy just a little bit extra to do these blocks. Because trust me when I tell you, it's much easier to do them bigger and cut them down. So we're going to do this one first. And we'll go from there. Now, uh, curves. You know, when you're cutting the square, it's easy. The, square, the straight parts to do a quarter of an inch bigger. To do the curve part, Okay, all I do is I bring my quarter of an inch line on that, on the end of the pattern, and I just start. And I move the quarter of an inch around, and I just do my lines for the curve. And I just keep going slow. Sometimes if you can cut the paper with that extra quarter of an inch and just use that as your stencil, great. In this case, I couldn't necessarily do that every time because the pieces were too close on the um, printed copy. So if you just keep going really, really slow all the way around, keeping your quarter of an inch line on your on the line that you want, you will get a curve without too much issues. Okay, that's how I did that. Let's see, now I'm gonna start piecing. Oops, one of my, doesn't look like it's on, hold on. Hmm. There it is. Good, 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 good. No matter how much I check these, so sometimes they always throw a curveball. Okay. So we are going to do two pieces like this and two pieces in this. 
and all four of them are going to have this curve piece. So to do this, it's really, really, oops. Hmm. Um, I think, make sure I got the right, yes, I got the right piece. Okay. I'm going to have to cut one more piece, two more pieces like this. So give me a second, because actually I can show you how I cut them. How's that? Because I didn't watch how I was cutting. And I got the salvage edge over here, which I don't want. So give me a second. Ah, I can show you exactly how to get the curve. How's that? Unfortunately, I got the salvage in this and I didn't realize it. So. Let's iron this real quick. I hope you guys are having a great weekend so far. Okay. Here we go. So, we're going to put this at least a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And I'm going to pin it. And I can pin it in a couple of spots. Just to make sure I have it in contact with everything. Okay. Now the straight piece is easy. I've got my quarter inch laying on my dark original cut line from the pattern. Now, I'm going to put my quarter inch line right on the cut line, and I'm going to keep following it around. I'm just kind of sketching the curve. You see that? That's all it takes. Simple, simple. Okay, so all I do is just roughly sketch that quarter inch line, following it all the way around a little bit at a time. Now with this, I would not do it with my rotary cutter because I won't get as good of a cut. There you go. How's oh, that for learning on the fly? Good morning, Stephanie. Happy Sunday. How are you? Okay. In case you missed it, Miss Stephanie, we'll go over it real quick again. There's two options that I'm going to show you on these blocks. One, we did app. I did applique with a lightweight fusible and I just stitched a small zigzag stitch over my lines, okay? The other way 
is standard piecing, traditional piecing. Now, I hate curves, okay? <laughs> I really, really hate curves. They never work the way they're supposed to when I try to do them, okay? So what I have learned is you have on these pattern, you have a dotted line, which is your quarter inch line, and you have a solid line on the outside, which is supposed to be your cut line. I actually cut them a quarter of an inch bigger on the cut line, okay? Trust me when I tell you it's better to be bigger and then trim it down when you're done than it is to be short and doing them exact size, exactly the size that they tell you for piecing. That makes sense to you? I always do them bigger because I always end up either with a pucker or I'm short on one side and big on the other side, too long on the other side. It's just not, not worth it. So if you are like we are doing with a kit, it may take a little bit of extra fabric to do it this way, to cut them a little bit bigger, but it's well worth it. If you're actually buying fabric for the kits, or buying fabric for the pattern, I would include it when it comes to these last few blocks. Good. Okay, so now we're going to show you how I put them together. And it doesn't matter whether we're doing the small one or the big one. I'm going to show you how to sew them just like I am. And they're all the same. All right. So... We're going to be doing two this with this color and two with this color. And all four of the corner ends are the same. And let me just show you how easy it is. Sometimes on these solids, it's hard to tell what the right side is. All right. So I keep the curve on the bottom. And I'm going to go slightly over. Come on, my fingers don't want to work today. There we go. Slightly over when I start. See that? And all I'm going to do, I always work with my needle down. So I happen to have a quarter inch foot with a guide. I'm going to start. And you're going to just start slow. Always with my needle in the down position when I stop. And then I'm going to lift my foot. If you have a Husqvarna, you don't have to lift your foot because the minute you stop, the foot comes up. But for the rest of us, I'm just going to keep on moving the piece on the bottom so that they line up and adjusting. Now, if you you want to hand piece these, more power to you. Then you can do them exactly the size that you need and turn, hand turn, applique, or, you know, that type of stuff. I've seen it done that way, too, but I don't do anything by hand. That's too much like a, a four-letter word. All right, we're going to keep on going here. So how are you doing, Miss Stephanie, with um, all your holiday prep? I have a ton left to do. Thank you. 
Ah, Hanukkah. Well, happy Hanukkah, my dear. I had a bunch of friends growing up that we used to celebrate Hanukkah as a child. And it was so much fun. And I would have, they we'd go to their house for Hanukkah and then they would come to my house for Christmas. And I got to learn a lot. Um, I've got a ton to do. I have to get tackle our um, guest room, which formerly was my daughter's bedroom. And then when my father passed away, we just switched beds, bedrooms so that she could have her own bath. And uh, we've been using that, we've just been using that room as a storage. I haven't really gone through all of my dad's stuff. Just things have been so crazy. So now with my granddaughter and my daughter and my son-in-law coming for the holidays, I have to go through that room and make sure it can be used now and get it somewhat organized and changed and straight. It's just all a mess. Oh, that's cool. I mean, growing up, Stephanie, I, I thought it was just normal. <laughs> I had a ton of fun learning, you know, other other religions and celebrations, and they had fun, and it, I, I enjoyed it. I think children should learn that way because there's so many different, you know, religions. Growing up in New York and things like that, you learn there's a lot more in life and a lot more out there than just your little group, just your immediate family. Yes, I know it's a work. And I still have to do this weekend. I got to finish the backsplash in my kitchen with um, water resistant Coats, three water, whoops, three water resistant coats. And then that'll be done. It is. I had fun. I mean, I just think it's it should be a requirement. I, I think kids learning, you know, Kwanzaa and just so many different things, I just think makes everybody a, more tolerant and more well rounded. In my opinion, I had fun learning as a child. There's so much up there that just so much craziness going on. And I think we all need to just take a step back and listen. Listen and learn. I dread, I'll tell you right now, with this quilt, this is the, the fun. I was glad this was in the end because these, I hate curves. I can't tell you how much I hate curves. And I played, this week was a crazy, so I had to really put the extra work in to make sure I knew what I was doing. <laughs> I really, really don't like curves. All right. Well, more power to you. This is just another option because no matter what I do, and I've been quilting for a really long time, curves are not my friend. Not even a little bit. I hate curves because they never work. So now this is what mine look like. Yeah, they look kind of wonky. Not really wonky, but they're definitely bigger. Trust me. I'll show you how it works. <laughs> 
Now we're going to iron everything to the outside edge. I hate the curves. They just never work out. Bigger is better for me. That's the only way I can get. The only time curves weren't a problem. Have you ever seen the So Kind of Wonderful for rulers and her potters? I've done quite a few of those and I sell those too, which I like those a lot. And I think she's the reason why I'm actually not too bad with curves now. I just have to make them all bigger. If I don't make them bigger, it doesn't work. All right. Almost. Almost. This one's going to, this video is going to be a little bit longer than some of them, only because there's a lot to go over, even with just two blocks. But by doing it my way, I don't get any cuts, and they're all exactly the size I need them to be. See? Nice flat. I like it. All right, now we get down to the fun part. It looks pretty bad, doesn't it? But watch this. So now, all I'm going to do, whoops, is keep my di diagonal in here, this edge here, and this edge here, and then I'm going to clean it up. Oh, it looks pretty, doesn't it? <laughs> There's more than one way to skin a cat. And I have to learn something because I always have problems with curves. You know, everybody has their weak points and their strengths, and me, curves are not my friend. At least I know you like curves. That means anytime I have curves, I'll send them to your house. How's that? All right. Now, all we have to do is sew two and two together and then sew them together this way. So, let's sew these together. I had to learn this lesson really, really early. Um, hers is just not my friend. I have tried a zillion times. Now, the only thing I got to do... Just make sure the seams right here 
line up. So that way, we don't have any problems getting them together. So that's probably the only place that in this block that I will pin. Look at them from this angle. Make sure that they're right where they should be. Then Oh, I did it right. Sometimes I have to redo them. Yes, that looks good. That one looks good. Okay, now we're going to iron the seams opposite. We'll iron one seam going towards the blue of this side. Well, actually, you're going to iron them both towards one of the fabrics. Towards the same fabric, and that way, it'll be easier to line them up. Okay. Now we're going to set our seams because we've got one seam going one way, one seam going the other way. So, I pin in the center seam first, and each seam at the end of the circle. Just because I don't want that seam moving. I don't want, I will use a ripper if I have to to adjust things, but trying hard to get it right on the first time. Does it work? No. Not always, but, you know, you do what you can. Oops. Looks like I got a little bit of a hold on. Oh. 
All right, let's see how bad I did. I think so, though. Well. Yeah, not too bad. All right, now we're going to iron it. Don't feel bad if you have to rip it out, because guess what? We all do that. <laughs> Any me. Once in a while, you'll get a little pucker, or if it's not completely lined up the way you want it. It is what it is. Now, once we do this, then we can square it up to the size that it says it's supposed to be. And I'm not going to tell you what that size is. Just look at your pattern. And it's really easy to square it up with the Tucker trimmer. I'll show you why. Now, this is bigger. It may not all line up perfect, but that's okay. You know why? Because I made it bigger. What is that? Hmm. Hold on. And guess what? When you quilt it, nobody's going to notice the little things here and there. Trust me. Okay. I believe in the 2020 rule. You know what that is? 2020 rule means... If you can look at it from 20 feet away, riding horseback going 20 miles an hour and you don't see anything wrong, there ain't nothing wrong. So I got this nice little square for the center with my diagonal lines going through that point. One side, turn off the other side. Then... Turn it around and put my mark where it's supposed to be. Voila. Did I, 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 I used, I lost, or I, I, not lost, but I used an excess of a half inch of fabric going all the way around. So guess what? I'm okay with that. You know why? Because I don't have to worry about my block being short. So again, on this box, you can do applique. And I just used a very light fusible heat and bond and did a really small zigzag stitch in this light tealy blue thread. Just there and there. And as far as I'm concerned, that's just another option for decoration. As long as you do it, on two of the same blocks. So you don't want to do it on one like this and one like this. Because remember, these are two halves of the quilt. Meaning, whatever's on this side is going to be duplicated on the other side. Because this is the body of the butterfly. So you don't want one block here on this side different from the same block that's on the other side. All right. Now we're going to do 
This black. So, again, I just cut them the same way. I cut all of my pieces a quarter of an inch bigger than they wanted. So, this solid line is their cut line. And I cut it a quarter of an inch bigger than that. Okay? What we're going to do is we're going to put these two together first, which is the easy part. Do you have any questions, Stephanie? While I iron this fabric. Now, is this the quote police way? Nope. And I'm okay with that. Because I have tried it the other way. No matter how many times I do, it's short. Or I end up with tuckers. And I just don't need that type of pressure. So I do it my way. Tucker trimmer. The Studio 180 ruler. I know it's hard to see, but I sell Studio 180 rulers. If you look them up, Tucker trimmer or just Studio 180, what makes them different is they're not one and done. So you buy the technique sheets like I went over with the um, last video with the flying geese and there's probably I don't know a half a dozen or more different technique sheets that go with the wing clipper to do all different types of blocks and the nice thing is she gives you what is your cut size block that you want what is the un or I should say what is the unfinished and finished size block you want and she usually has a huge new table filled with all different sizes and then you She'll tell you exactly what to cut, how big to cut all the pieces. And you just trim it up afterwards so you never lose your points. Things I like bigger and then cutting them down. It's just, to me, it's safer. It's a lot less aggravation. And you never have the wrong size. So uh, we've got four sets of these. We're going to sew them all together. Simple, simple. What I recommend, okay, do not mix these up. Meaning, whichever fabric, I went with the red and dot on top when I sew it through. If you don't, you're going to have to unstitch something because you'll have them in the wrong order. Okay? Trust me when I tell you. So just keep whichever one out of the two fabrics, keep that one on top when you sew all of these. Together. Don't, you know, right now we're sewing them this way with the dots on top. Don't switch it and sew it this way because then you're going to be on the wrong side. This one, we're going to put together slightly different than we did the last one because we're going to have an extra piece at the bottom. So I had to piece it just a little bit different. And I'll show you what I need. And there are a lot of Studio 180 rollers. I mean, a lot. All of my beginners, I try to stay, I hate wasting money with a passion. 
And I have, I mean, you got to realize I've been quilting since I was 12. I have probably 200 rulers. I hate one and done rulers. They drive me crazy. So with my beginners, I try and push them. Really, all you, you need is the her rulers and a straight ruler, a long straight ruler. That's it. Because you'll never have something that you can't make with all of those rules. Whether it's, I mean, even a kaleidoscope. She has 60 degrees. Rules. She has star rules. I think there's less than a dozen rulers altogether. Oh, I forgot. I'm having a fifth day of Christmas sale on the website through Monday. All rulers, whether the quilting rulers, long arm rulers, or cutting rulers, or deck decker's rulers, are all 20% off. Yeah, I went there. And I think some of them are on the website. I don't remember. I put, keep adding new stuff to the website and I forget. Not forget, but I just get busy. There's only so much time in the day. To get it all done. So yes, all the Westerly rulers. If you have a long arm, all the uh, handy quilter rulers. All the Studio 180 rulers. Any ruler in the shop, including the Tucker Trimmer, the new Tucker Trimmer, they're all... 20% off. I just don't remember off the top of my head what I have on the website and what I don't have on the website, the new website, I should say. I know I have some of them on there, but definitely not all because I have a lot of rulers in the shop. But if there's something that you want that you don't see on the website, let me know and I will send you an invoice. Right. Now, we have got four halves like this. So now we have to put this part on the bottom, which we're doing exactly the way we did before. Yes, you can always call me, except I'm not in the shop until Tuesday. A sale, there'll be a different sale on Tuesday. Oops, wrong one. Okay, so again, I'm going to start just a little bit over what I the edge, keeping the big piece on the bottom, working with the foot down, I mean, your needle down. And just go slow. Oh crap. I lost the thread again. Oh, the down. Deserve time away. And all that means is if I'm not at the shop, it means I have a ton of stuff to do at home. So whether I'm at the shop or at home, it's still work. It's actually a lot of work. That's why my knees are shot. I've been going for two months, nonstop, up and down ladders, whether it's working on renovating my kitchen or doing all the decorating.
Ugh. All right. I wasn't paying attention. And I went just a little too far without turning. All right. Get in the Uh, hopefully we'll go faster now and I'll pay attention. Tuesday is going to be a crazy day in the shop. You know why? I have probably, I don't know, 60 bolts, 60 cases, of, or 60 bolts of fabric coming in. Plus panels and patterns, and that's not even all of it. I'm still waiting for them to ship Marrakesh. They were supposed to ship it early last week and it hasn't shipped yet. So I get to play musical bolt all beginning of this week. Lots and lots of rappers. Yeah, it's going to be a little crazy. And they're going to be all delivered at the same time. Because they're all shipping... But UPS. Then I already tracked it. So it's going to be a bulk load of fabric. Something patterns that I'm going to have to check in. All the fabric and the patterns and unwrap and pin and get them on the shelves. I've got one shelf ready for Marrakesh and that's the stuff that's not even coming in yet. That was supposed to ship last week. But it's all of my basics plus a few extras. So we've got canvas, which is the Northcott grunge. We've got a bunch of white on whites, gray on grays, and blacks on blacks. We're simply neutral. And what else? Let's see. Oh, Patrick Gloss. Um, glisten, metallic, and pearl, which is going to be oh, so pretty. Plus, a few others. It's like, oh, we got a lot of batiks coming in, banyan batiks, whole bunch. It's just crazy. I've got, let's see, what else do I have? I have some pre cuts. I'll be crazy. <laughs> almost, almost, and then I can 
I'm going to get this done and show you what I'm doing. After the class today, I've got four stockings to embroider. already did some digitizing. Been busy. And then after that, I get to start on my backsplash. Wow. <laughs> yep. Lots of fabric coming in. I might have a volunteer tomorrow for a while, which will be nice to help me open up boxes. Lots of boxes. Oh, I got a mess up. Oh. I hate when I do that. I'm not paying attention. Yeah, I think all in all, I've got close to 75 bolts coming in in the next, between this, sometime in this week, all of them, I think. It's too much. Too, too much. It's not too much. It's fun, but it's a lot of work. You know, that's a work. <laughs> Yeah, well, now we get to iron better. And just like we did before, we're going to iron towards the outside. And I iron the back first just to make sure it comes out right. And then apply my best press and iron the front. As much as I'm enjoying, going to enjoy my family for the holidays, this year is just too much crap. So I'm kind of looking forward to it being done so I can get back to a little bit quieter. There's a lot of prep work I got to do to get ready for everybody to come in. But... It'll be nice. I don't know what's going on with the hubby. Hubby might be in the hospital. Yeah. Well, I mean, what can I say? It's not much I could do about it. I'll just gotta go with the flow. I hope your household is doing well, Miss Stephen. Yeah, unfortunately, I have a feeling my hubby has not done in any stretch of the imagination. His toes are not getting any better. So, I don't know if he's going back to the doctors on Thursday. I don't know if The graph has failed, or if the toes are too far gone. Either way, I think he's going to have some toes amputated at the very least. And if the vein, the graft has failed, his leg is going to go at the very minimum. So we'll shall see. It's making this year a little bit stressful, to say the least. Holidays. But, I mean, I can't change it. Nothing I can do to change it. I can't fix it. Um, so, I just got to go with the flow. And that's what I'm doing. Whatever happens, 
happens. Whatever it is, I just pray to God that, and I'm not trying to get religious, but I hope they figure it out fast. And he's home for Christmas with the granddaughters coming and my daughter and my son-in-law. It would not be fun if I have to spend it in the hospital. I'm mean, just not looking forward to that. I can tell you that. Thank you. Okay. Next step. Actually, tea break. Only so much can go. I can only do so much. Plain and simple. So, we just did this. Now, all I'm going to do is clean this up, and I'll show you how I do it. Oh, I'm a teetotaler through and through, let me tell you. I'm definitely a teetotaler. My aunt is a World War, or was a, a World War II bride. And she taught me how to do high tea. I love tea. My daddy drank tea. So, I'm a tea drinker. Tea totaler. Okay. All I'm going to do is use my center line down on my seam. Get it so that the edge here and here is where it's supposed to be. It's right on the edge of the fabric. Now, is this going to be exactly the size that they say? Probably not, but it's going to be pretty damn close. We're probably going to be within a quarter of an inch of what they say, thereabouts. And guess what? I'm okay with that because you know what? I didn't have to go through a whole bunch of aggravation to fix it. Because I guarantee I would have messed it up. So, let's see. Yeah. I kind of keep an eye where this and this end is on the spectrum just to make sure I'm pretty much where they're all even. One more, and then we're almost done with these. Almost. Voila. Now, we get to put this part on. So now while I'm ironing these, oh, tea, hi tea. I love tea. My favorite is um, Bigelow cinnamon stick. That's the one that I get all the time. I actually buy it by the case. I even have a tea chest. Not that I use it very often. But I do. My brother bought me a tea chest many, many years ago. And I love it. And it's just like if you were in a restaurant. So I have all the velvet 
squares when you open it up for all the different tea bags. Then I have loose tea. I love tea. Tea is a good thing. It's like part of the four food groups. <laughs> I can't do coffee. Coffee is just not. Once in a great while, I'll get a hankering for a cup of coffee. And I always pay for it in the end. Because coffee does not like me. My body does not like coffee. <laughs> not even a little bit. It does. <laughs> okay, we can be sisters. I have sisters. I have three. Two sisters. Two sisters. I had three brothers, but I have two sisters. Please use another one. I'll be good that way. No problem. Okay. What I do is I take this and I fold it in half so I can figure out what my center is. And ooh, I got a boo-boo there. Booger. I'm going to have to get another one. So I didn't realize it was cut in. Okay, give me a second. I hope I have enough fabric. You know what that's like. Hmm. Ah. Oh. Um. I think I left it at the shop, maybe not, I don't know. All right, we're going to use it and pray that it can get cut off. I love tea. I literally, I've been getting better though because I used to do tea all day, hot tea and then iced tea. And I'm trying to be better to my body because I ain't getting that young anymore. And I'm trying to drink more water. So, I've been trying to limit myself to one hot tea a day, and then the rest of the day I drink water. I didn't used to like water at all. Not even a little bit. But I did find the circle drink bottle and water cartridges that I actually like because they don't taste like water. They taste like pink lemonade, things like that. So... Okay, let's get back to almost being done. Oop, wrong one. So this is the center of the corner. And what I'm going to do, put the pin there so I know where the center was. I put the center right on the seam of here. And I pin. Then I just kind of, I know it's weird, but I just kind of move along. I'm not going to pin. I'm just trying to figure out where the end is. Because these are going to be bigger than I need. The, these pieces here are going to be bigger than what we need. 
Remember I told you, bigger is better. Okay, there's my start. And just like we've been doing, I'm gonna sew. This curve, for some reason, is easier than doing this side. <laughs> I can do this side without stopping too much. Now, why did I put the pin? Why do I care where the center is? Because I'm trying to make sure that this corner will be in the center. So when I trim this side and this side, I'm trimming them equally. Fabulous, you're talking about the new cir the circle drink bottles? Is that what you're talking about, Stephanie? Because, yes, I found I like them because I don't like water at all. I'm not a water drinker, never been. But one of my girlfriends at our retreat in July had one. And I'm trying to be more healthy, so I figured I'd give it a try. And, oh, my God, I love it. It's the only way to drink water. So I'm drinking probably not as much as I should be, but definitely much more than I was drinking. Yes, me too. Um, and I just, I like the flavors too. They even have a sweet tea, which is all right, but I like the raspberry tea is pretty good. The sweet tea, I don't know, it's got a little bit of an after flavor, but I liked the raspberry tea. And I love the pink lemonade. I've been going through, I don't know, I could do probably 48 ounces of water a day drinking that. On the low end is 22, but it just depends on how busy I am. But it's definitely more water than I've ever drank in my life. So there again, I just pin the center and I'm just going over like I was pinning just so I know where to start. Because this way... You're going to have that much extra on each side. And that way when we trim it up, we're trimming up these two halves the same size. By eyeball. Let me tell you. If you get somebody that looks at it and says, oh, that looks a little bit bigger. That one looks a little bit bigger. You're not going to notice it. If they do say anything, they are not your friend and run away. Yes, I'm trying to be good. So, this is probably the most water I've drank in my entire life. But, that's a good thing. Actually, I should do it the other side. I normally try to do it with the bottom as the curve, as the corner piece. Don't ask me why. And I'm almost done, I promise. I know this, this is a long one, but keep messing it. And then I'll show you how I cut them. And then all you've got to do is put the squares together and trim up the final big square. Yeah, let's go.
ish. Do more after this. Told you this one was going to be a little bit longer because there's a lot more steps. So what else can we chat about, Miss Stephanie? Next, this we start putting this quote together together because these are the last actual blocks. Then we get to piece them. Quilt itself. Finally, I gotta get this done so I can start working, finishing up jubilation, which we're doing in January. Which I love how that's come. Come on. All right, last one. Gracious me, oh my. I'm almost there.
Oof. About time. Goodness gracious me, oh my. All right, just like we have been, we're going to iron them out towards the corner. And I start from the back just to make sure it's laying flat. It'd be hard for quilting if your seam is all kinds of wavy or half up, half down. So I just give it a quick press from the back. Hmm. Yep, and then I will spray it with best press. And I'm not trying to iron it into submission. Doing it this way, you really shouldn't have to. Okay, so I'm going to get these ironed real quick. It's done, at least for this week. I'm not going to do the last block, which is basically it's just a different size of this pink one, but it's done the same exact way. And I got to get them done this week and get the next piece put together. I'll show you what we're doing. Doing this. I'm going to make two of these sections next week, which is page fifteen, and then we're going to take a break thing after that for the holiday. I don't know. I got to look at the calendar. My, my brain is fried. I can't keep track of what day is what. I know, isn't it getting bad? It's my brain is just right, and I keep, yeah, you because know, my dad had memory issues, so I keep like, I know it's just because I'm tired and there's just so much going on. Um, but every once in a while, I catch myself like, oh my god, is that hereditary? And then I used to sit there and have a cult full blown conversation with myself and yell at myself because my dad's was vascular dementia, not. Alzheimer's per se, so but yeah, it's been that that kind of last few months. <laughs> I don't know honestly whether I'm coming or going because never in a million years when I started the kitchen, which was in October, did I expect I figured, oh. I haven't done plenty of times for a holiday. And then my husband went in the hospital, had two surgeries in less than a month. So it kind of put a monkey wrench in everything. Now I'm playing catch up. All right. Now we're going to touch these. And we're going to cut them the same way we did the other one. Um, the only difference is, you know, this work. Yeah, this will work. Okay. Hey, just like we did before, I'm keeping the center line on my seam. 
put in the edge here and the edge here, and then I'm going to clean this up. Now, they're not going to be exactly what they're supposed to be according to the pattern, but they're going to be pretty damn close. See these two? They look pretty much the exact same size. They might be off a little bit here and there, but guess what? Nothing that nobody is going to notice. And if they do notice, you know what I say? They're not your friend. Run. Let me just make sure. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Hold on. I just got to keep an eye on. Because I don't want this... Yeah, the center point be too small. I feel like that too, Stephanie, but I know mine is just, it's just, I take on a lot. I got a lot to do just in general. And it's just, it's like a never ending. People are always say, oh, you're Wonder Woman. Not really. I just don't know any difference, honestly. You know, I've been a caregiver my entire adult life, just about. And, um, I don't know how to be any other way. I really don't. But uh, now, all we have to do is piece all of these together. I pin here and here to make sure. Whoops. To make sure they're in the right spot and everything is going to line up. There. And there. And now I'm going to sew them together like two half blocks. And hope because I'm tired. That seems add up. A line, I should say. <laughs> oh, I'm tired. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? After this, I'm going to check on my husband, see how he's doing. It's his first day back to work in a few weeks. Works from home. Then maybe get some lunch and start water resistant coats on my back splash. I have a lot to do this weekend. Lots and lots. I try to cram a whole bunch in on the weekend. Yeah, not too bad. No, this one's not that good. All right. We're going to rip this one out just a little bit. Not the whole way. Just going to do right 
before and after the scene. I always, my list of things to do on the weekends is always huge. I always have much more than I can ever possibly get done. You don't necessarily have to you know, I fudge a lot. You don't have to unstitch the whole thing because this one is lined up really well. So all I did was a little bit before, a little bit after. And I realign it. In it better. And... Hopefully, we stitch it. Hopefully. Okay, that's not perfect, but guess what? There ain't nothing perfect in quilting. It's better, so we're going to just leave it alone, right? Because I don't want to play with it anymore. Uh, this one's pretty good, too. Okay, so what I do is I take them both in the same direction and iron the uh, seam one way, the same way. That way, when we turn them around, we can nest our seams because they'll be in different positions. They'll be in opposite positions. All right, now we just got to put these two parts together. And nest our seams. We're going to actually want to, I don't pin often, but this is one of the times where I definitely do. So... I'm going to put a pin in my first center seam. I'm going to put a pin in this seam. And I'm going to put a pin all the way out here in this seam. Just to try and stop myself from having to unstitch and restitch because they're not lining up. Almost done. Okay. 
hard. So now, let's see. Oh, I actually did pretty good that time. <laughs> good enough for government work. I'm okay with it. Now all you have to do is square up your block. You can see what size it's supposed to be in the instructions. So just square it up. You know, use whatever ruler you have. If you have a big square, it's going to have, um, it should have a diagonal line on it. Most of them do. You don't have to necessarily use, you know, specialty rule like a tucker trimmer or anything like that. Let's see. All right. Voila. Get this one, get this one, get this one. We've got one more to let you do like this. And then um, I didn't go over this side, this one, because they're basically the same as putting this one together. The only difference is the different size. That's it. You have any questions? If not now, maybe later, you'll know where I am. You can always post a comment here or email me. I'll be putting this video up on YouTube this week. Oh, my pleasure. And I will see you next week. We're going to, what is it, page 15? Page 15. I'm going to do two of these. You too, my dear. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And I'll see you later.